Welcome to Colonize the Ocean podcast, where we discuss oceanic colonization, exploration, and education with your hosts, Adam Jewell and Brendan Traxler. time again everybody it is the colonize the ocean podcast my name is adam jewel i am the social media manager for atlanta sea colony and your most obese host of the colonize the ocean podcast and with me is my yeah and with me is my good friend and the and the founder of atlanta sea colony and uh kind of the founder of colonize the ocean podcast his name is brendan traxler brendan how you doing I'm, um, I'm, whoa, I'm good, but that's a, that's kind of odd intro. I, what kind of picture does that paint for picture people as well? I know. Well, hopefully like a panoramic picture to get all of my obeseness into one picture. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> I was really hoping I'd get something out of that. Wow. Okay. Um, Hey, Brendan. Yeah. How's your toilet paper situation going on? You know, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for asking. Um, so we're going to kind of allude into what this uh, this uh, episode is going to be about. And some of you might be like us, some of you might not. We're going to tiptoe a little bit, but we're going to talk a little bit, just a little bit about this coronavirus thing. Well, and a lot thing. of you guys, oh, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Did the middle of my sentence interrupt the beginning of yours? Well, I think you need to preface the fact that this is a very topical content. So if somebody like a year from now is listening to this podcast, you're like, what? What are you talking about this for? So this is very, very topical for the time me being. Sorry, yeah, we're in the middle of March 2020 right now. There we go. If, uh, if we need to... Well, and it kind of goes back to what we said in the last episode, where we're going to try to be more current events with our with our uh, topics, you know, and we're kind of experimenting with the podcast. So, so now that you got that out of your system, um, we don't know where you guys stand. Uh, our... Our world is kind of divided right now when it comes to the coronavirus, whether we're just so annoyed and tired of hearing about it. There's people that are just like, okay, guys, just get over it. We're, we're going to be fine, blah, blah, blah. And then there's other groups of people that's like, no, you got to take this super seriously. Everybody's going to die, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, we don't want to get, you know, in between your thoughts and all that. But, uh, you know, it did bring up a conversation between Brendan and I about um, how this would affect underwater colonization how how do we play a part in this and a lot of you guys are thinking like that's kind of weird like why would you be talking about that but um i kind of made a comment earlier on our facebook page about hey if we lived underwater in isolation you know or in our small groups and you know we're down there for extended periods of time we wouldn't have to worry about the coronavirus that's i mean as long as you're not letting a bunch of people come visit you yeah like if you're running an underwater hotel or something which you know would be in our plans in the future. Yeah, that's a little bit different. But I'm talking about like the individual like houses and habitats that we'd build and put underwater. Um really like depending on how long you have supplies for and all that stuff, we could just be riding this thing out right now, Brendan. That's very true. It'd be uh I mean, with a lot bunch of people being quarantined at home or quarantined or whatever, it's basically the same thing. But you got a beautiful view outside if you're gonna do it. Yeah, yeah, like, say you did have to get quarantined. They're like, hey, man, you can't be around people. I'd be like, all right, I'm going to go to my underwater habitat. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to stare at, like, sharks and dolphins and orcas. I don't know where your habitat's at. That's up to you, and that's a different topic altogether. But, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, in all seriousness, we did kind of mention that, you know, one of the functions that a lot of people might not think about with underwater colonization um, underwater habitation or whatever you want to call it is being able to isolate yourself in times of need, whether it's a global pandemic like we're facing now, or maybe there is some other like national or international emergency going on where you need to be isolated. You need to get away from civilization. That's what these, uh, another function that these things could serve. Yeah, I mean, you look back, what was it, like 10 years ago when the big prepping movement was going on here in the United States, it's basically the same thing. I mean, you could you could have one of these as a prepper's paradise. You know, it's it's where underwater where only you probably know where it's at. Um, you know, it's 
unless you can hold your breath or you got some scuba equipment, then you got to figure out how to get into the thing. So from that standpoint, that's a completely different subject than what we're talking about right now, but it all alludes to the same thing that yes, it is a isolated, even your oxygen can and should be uh, purified, cleaned um, through different scrubbing mechanisms. So your air would be clean as well. So yeah, it's, it's ideal for uh, a situation like this. Yeah. And so my wife and I were talking yesterday or the day before about it and she's, or let me backtrack. So I've always been into like the prepping stuff. Like I've always been really interested in it. I've loved these whole doomsday prepper things. Granted, I, I don't have a bunker. I don't have a lot of preparation supplies or anything like that, but it's always been something like I've really been interested in. I've always wanted to do like I've, I've wanted to turn my basement into like a fallout shelter or whatever. And she's always thought I was kind of weird for thinking that way. And, you know, that that's pretty impractical. Well, yesterday she, she comes to me with, with a YouTube video. She's like, you know, these people are talking about prepping. We should probably, you know, think about this stuff in the future. And that kind of led to a mild argument because I'm like, I've been trying to tell you this stuff for a while, but I think it's one of those things where means I'm her husband. It's going to go in one year and out the other, and she needs to hear it from someone else. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, I'll, my I'll, wife, Brendan. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to her. I'll, I'll tell her what's up. But, her, uh, her, her argument against that was, well, sometimes I tell you things and you don't listen to me until Brendan tells you that. So, <laughs> so you got roped into this argument, by the oh, way. <laughs> nice. Thanks for telling me right now. <laughs> but anyway, uh, where are we going with this now? I haven't lost train of thought. But yes, no, uh, prepping's cool. And yeah, no, I, it, once again, I, there's multiple, I'm trying to segue around this whole thing, but there are multiple uses for an underwater habitat, I think is what we're getting at here. But staying on topic of, of the coronavirus and just any sort of, you know, virus infection, whatever. The, we the, faced about 20 of them in the past 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. And once again, it's the same thing. You can say the same thing with space too. That's again, it's, it's an isolated um, habitat in space, the international space station, stuff along those lines. It's the air is cleaned. It's uh, nice. It's away from all human civilization. You got, there's only one way in and out. It's a, you know, Either way you want to go, uh, you're, you're going to get away from the virus. Yeah, and I don't know. It's uh, it's one of those things that uh, I guess it's another selling point for us when we, we, we want to talk about why you'd want to do this because a lot of people are, are still – and I mean it's their, their right to not want to, but there's a lot of people that still think it's just kind of a crazy idea to want to go spend time – extended periods of time underneath the, the water in the ocean. Um, I yeah. mean, even this even extends to like kind of the seasteaders too. They're out in an isolated uh, area too, and just kind of being away from civilization. So, but at the same time, that's how you stay protected from a lot of different things too. Yeah. But the same thing, I think your wife was a prime example of that. I mean, it was, it was one of those things that she didn't care about. It wasn't in her even peripheral vision at that point in time until it actually was an issue. And there was a, and she found a video that was the answer to the problem. And same thing until we start building underwater habitats. And so, you know, or space or seasteading, any of these things become available to the common man. It's not going to be a, a solution to the problem. Right. And it's just kind of an introvert's paradise. I know you're more of an introverted person. You don't like being around large groups of people necessarily. And you're kind of. I wouldn't say you're antisocial, but you prefer to be amongst your your immediate group of friends or family, and that's about it. So, I mean, even if there's not anything serious going on, what better way to get away from people than to really get away from people? Yeah, I mean, I, everybody <laughs> I think likes to get away every once in a while, anyway. But and yes, I, you know, small groups of two are my desired. <laughs> so like when you're hanging out with your your you know your dad and your your sister and your nieces like you're already like this is too much oh uh, yeah give me like a half hour hour at the max and i'm like all right i'm done <laughs> one quick meal and then you're out yep <laughs> anyways back <laughs> yes. back to the topic but yeah i mean in all seriousness of you know like i said at the top of the episode I don't know where a lot of people stand on this current p 
pandemic of coronavirus, whether you're on the side of it's not that big a deal or it's the end of the world, whatever it is, um, you know, take it as seriously as you can. I mean, whether it's mild or deadly, I mean, you got to watch out for yourself, watch out for your neighbors and all that. Um, but I mean, involving underwater colonization with that too, this, I just, I can't emphasize enough that this would be an alternative for a lot of people to be able to stay away from, you know, viruses or whatever it is. And and it kind of, I kind of wanted to, I guess, ask you this question too, and maybe this is more of a big picture question. So with, with a lot of like diseases and stuff, there is sometimes the best way to build an immunity is to be around mild sickness, which builds up your immunity system. How would that work for people that want to live underwater and maybe are away from from groups for long periods of times to where they might not be able to build up that immunity? Yeah, that's something I've often thought about is is what type of things will <clears throat> what I don't want to use the word evolve, but I guess it would be it'd be a, a sort of evolution in the in the human species as we start living underwater in space somewhere around that, especially the the limit to sunlight, you know the limit to all the different pollens and everything else like that, that, you know, humanity has been used to and, and gravitated towards what will that do? And I, you know, I'm sure there have been some studies done on that because they have put people in isolation for periods of time. Um, but when you start looking at generation and generation wise, I mean, that's, that's unknown of right now. And I'll be curious to see what happens with that, you know, as it starts to become a mainstay. Yeah. And with, with, uh, medicine always evolving and technology with that i mean vaccines and stuff are created all the time and i'm sure within a certain period of time we're gonna have a vaccine for this coronavirus thing but so i mean that's one way to i guess have some immunity but at the same time that's there's the always the mild viruses that go around whether it's like the stomach bug and just the cold, sometimes just being around it more and getting sick a couple times helps you be more immune to it. And that's not to say, once again, that, you know, we're, we're, we're going to use the term colony where there is going to be groups of people underwater. Yeah, you, there's going to be individual habitats, but there will be, you know, probably larger structures as well that will have communities of people, which I don't want to say we want to introduce viruses or anything like that, but like if a person were to get sick, you're still around people and being able to still have that natural way of building up the immunity system. But also there's always that um, way of developing artificial, I guess, uh, habitats or uh, environments to where, like you said, we could have the, the artificial UV rays that could give us that vitamin D and, have underwater, you know, not underwater plants, but have types of uh, foliage and plants inside these habitats to, you know, help with just having that, I guess, natural, natural, uh, I guess, Nature. yeah, to get a sense of that. So, I mean, I foresee it being a hurdle, but I don't see it being a, um, a wall that's going to stop us. No, or stop this from happening. I agree, and I also think we're looking pretty far down the road here. You know, you're looking at fifty to hundred years for all this kind of stuff. I, I believe, uh, but even at that point, it'd be similar to if you're going to another country right now, you have to get your inoculations before you can go to the other country. It'd be a similar prospect. Says, hey, I'm going to go to the land. I'm going to go to this area of the land, whether it's United States or you know Europe or wherever wherever they're heading to. Um, you, you need to get your inoculations before you go there to prevent you from getting any of the diseases and stuff along those lines too so i think there, there's that's going to come into play but once again who knows as, as science advances you know we may be genetically conditioned to not get them at that point in time too when all this takes place right so who knows what we're, we're starting to talk 50 years down the road um at just how quick technology and and everything's advancing yeah and i mean that's another way of just kind of plugging this podcast too is that you know we're trying to stay on top of the news that comes out about, um, you know, underwater architecture, underwater marine technology, 
And also, we're you know, we're keeping our eye on health advances that could relate to how we're going to adapt and, you know, live in these isolated conditions. I mean, we always talk about how um, the astronauts and NASA learns a lot from from underwater training and um, isolation, where I think in certain cases that could be reversed, too, because we're kind of keeping an eye on how these you know, astronauts that are spending up to a year um, on the International Space Station, how they adapt when they get back, what's changed with them. Um, I mean, they always monitor their health when they get back because, you know, it's a new frontier. No one's supposed to, you know, that human body wasn't programmed to be in space or underwater naturally. So it's all about how we can progress with that. Yeah, I think you nailed it on the head right there. So we wanted to get, well, I should say I wanted to get my, get a chance to try to incorporate this with what we're trying to do, you know, and just get an extra episode out there. <laughs> but uh, no, it, in all seriousness, um, regardless of where you are with it, I guess my message to everybody regardless is um, just keep an eye on your neighbors, um, you know, help out the people around you because right now, or right before we talked on the podcast, we were talking about how all like the stores and stuff are acting crazy because of availability of like sanitizer and toilet paper and all that. So yeah, some of those things, the toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> could, could be in jerks, but you know, check on your neighbors too. I mean, if you're one of those people that has enough toilet paper and enough hand sanitizer, go make sure that they got some too. You know, I mean, that's one of the things to help prevent sickness is, you know, it doesn't matter how many rolls of toilet paper you have and how much soap you have. If your neighbor doesn't have any, they're going to come to your door and cough on you. and It's not going to make a difference. So, so yeah, I guess that's my positive thought of this episode is just, just help out your friends and family and your neighbors and make sure they're doing all right, but try to keep like a six foot distance when you do it. Yeah. I will second your thought, <laughs> you know, uh, same thing with water. You know, I saw the shelves empty of water and stuff like that too. Um, this isn't supposed to be a PSA by any point, uh, but, but yeah, stop taking all the water too. No, but uh, yeah, look out for everybody else. Keep be vigilant. Wash your hands. We stuff. did the economically or the environmentally friendly way and the economically friendly way instead of going out and buying like bottles of water. Because every time that we buy bottled water, it seems like we never drink it, and which is dumb. So like, my wife has this like obsession with like buying water bottles like these metallic ones like the reusable canisters and all that like just like coffee mugs it's water bottles and coffee mugs that she likes to collect so like we took a bunch of these big uh her water jugs and just filled them up and put them in the fridge so like instead of buying tons of water bottles or uh you know water we have that instead so not that i foresee there being a water shortage or clean water shortage but I guess just in case that becomes a thing, we have a, a supply ready. <laughs> and from the being green aspect, you don't want to be having all those water bottles anyway because you're going to end up in the ocean. Right, yeah. So there you uh, go. Yeah. Think of the whales, jerks. Just yeah. fill up a jug. <clears throat> I shouldn't call our viewers jerks. Maybe they are people that bought a bunch of water. I'm sorry that I offended you, but seriously, think twice. Okay, Brendan, you got anything else you want to add to this one before we close it out? Absolutely not. I think we've done enough damage for today. No, I, uh, no, we're good. Uh, once again, thanks for everybody for listening. This is a shorter one, but uh, a timely one and an important one. And just want to get you thinking, too. Yep. Stay healthy, guys. And in the meantime, if you're in quarantine, why don't you do yourself a favor? Come over and check us out on our social media sites at Atlanta Sea Colony. Or you can check out our websites. We have AtlantaSeaColony.com. We also have colonizetheocean.com. And uh, as Brendan said before, we have a YouTube channel. You can check us out there. The The podcast is available on the YouTube site as well. I know some people prefer that. Um, yeah, we're on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter. Um, LBRY, I believe, is the new video site that you said that we're on as well. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's correct. So, yeah, and we're on Reddit. I keep saying that, and I'm trying to get Reddit going again. I've been trying to join other Reddit communities to try to get the Atlanta Sea Colony Reddit going. So you can find us on all those, and it'll all be in our show notes. But until next week or next episode, stay healthy, guys, and always remember that we love you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.